In this video, we're going to be looking at problem number four from Pendulum's and SHM Problem Solving Worksheet. Problem number four reads, the length of a simple pendulum is 0.760 meters, the pendulum bob has a mass of 365 grams, and it is released at an angle of 12 degrees from the vertical. Using simple harmonic approximations, calculate A, the frequency of the pendulum, B, the speed of the bob when it passes through the lowest point of its swing, and C, the total energy of the oscillator, assuming no losses. Part A is pretty straightforward. In part A, they want us to calculate the frequency of this pendulum. We know the length of the pendulum. We know the mass of the pendulum. And uh, we know we're here on Earth. So we know that G is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. The frequency for a pendulum is going to have the formula frequency equals 2 pi, the square root of G over L. That's 1 over 2 pi, the square root of G over L. It's the inverse of the period formula, which you can see up here. So 1 over 2 pi square root of 9.8 meters per second squared divided by the length in meters, 0 0.760 meters. We can plug this into our calculator and we get a frequency of 0 0.57 hertz. That's part A. Nice and straightforward plug and chug situation. We're just seeing here that frequency is the inverse of period. Part B. This is a little more complex. The speed of the bob when it passes through the lowest point of the swing. So if this is our amplitude position right here, theta equals 12 degrees, then this bob is swinging such that it's going to reach the lowest point right here. This length from here all the way down to here is the length L. That's also this length right here, right? That's L as well. The length of the string isn't changing as it swings through. And we know this angle right here is 12. But what's happening here is that we have a change in height of our mass. The actual pendulum bob from its amplitude of 12 degrees down to zero degrees it has a change in height. This distance right here is equal to h. That's our change in height. And this distance right here, well, that's going to be l minus h, right? So it's the whole length l of the whole pendulum bob minus h right here. And you'll notice that this line right here forms a right angle right here. And we have a nice little right triangle with the hypotenuse L. The long side is L minus H. And we don't know what the short side is, but it doesn't matter because we have this angle right up here. So we can determine the length of this side using trigonometry. I'm going to redraw our triangle down here. So I have a 12 degree angle right here. I have L equals 0 0.76 meters right here. And this side right here is going to be L cosine theta. This is a 90 degree triangle right here. So I'm going to solve for this distance right here. But recall, L cosine theta is also going to equal this distance right here, which is L minus H. Okay, so we can say 0 0.76, that's L, times the cosine of our angle, 12 degrees, is equal to 0 0.76 minus H, our unknown change in height. Why do I care about this unknown change in height? Because if I can find H, I can calculate the amount of potential energy I have at the amplitude, which will be equal to the amount of kinetic energy I have at this position, which will allow me to calculate the speed of the bob as it passes through the equilibrium position or the lowest point. 
So I can run this through my calculator and I can determine that H is going to be equal to zero point zero one seven meters. That is the change in height from this position to that position. So now I want to calculate what the potential energy is at this position because that will be the total mechanical energy in the system. So UG at 12 degrees is equal to MGH, which means it's equal to 0 0.365 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times our height of 0 0.017 meters. Plug that into my calculator and I get 0 0.061 joules. That's the total mechanical energy in the system. That's how much potential energy I have here. It's how much kinetic energy I will have here. So I can then say that the kinetic energy at zero degrees is going to be equal to one half m v max squared, the maximum velocity squared, which is going to give me the maximum kinetic energy, which is equal to the potential energy at the amplitude position of 12 degrees. So I want to solve this for v max. So let's plug in our numbers. We've got 0.061 joules is equal to 1 half times 0.365 kilograms times V max squared. I'm going to solve for V, and I find that V max is equal to 0.58 meters per second. That is the answer to B. That is the speed of the bob when it passes through the lowest point of the swing. The total mechanical energy of the system is equal to the kinetic energy when we're at the maximum velocity, which occurs at the lowest point of the swing. And then part C. This is simple because we already did it. The total energy of the oscillator, assuming no losses, We've already calculated that. We calculated it right here. Remember that the total energy of the system is equal to the potential energy of the system at the amplitude position. So total mechanical energy of the system is equal to 0 0.061 joules, as we calculated in part B, determining the total mechanical energy of the system. I hope this was helpful.